Good morning, my butterflies. Welcome back to Clean TT Loves. Today we are going to do my hair. So before we get started, I am so happy to have you guys back. Um, thinking about doing things a little bit differently this year. The great thing about anything that you set out to do um, on your own is you can do it your way as long as you follow the rules, right? So even entrepreneurs have rules, so you don't get to do whatever you wanna do. So I like to start my day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you share this video with everyone. If you are not following the nonprofit page, which is Divine Purpose, make sure that you follow that page on Instagram, and then subscribe to the list on our webpage at divinepurpose.com. Also, make sure that you're, of course, following Queen TT on Instagram, and then, make sure you're subscribed. We gotta get this page monetized. Let me tell you what monetization means for you. It's not for me, it's for you. It means more surprises, more books for college, more adventures in high school, and we're really able to build this thing out. So I am super proud and honored to say that about 80% of what we bring in goes directly back to the people in the program. Of course, we have to operate. And as we grow, those numbers will change um, because we'll bring people in. Because I can't keep doing this. <laughs> but we'll bring people in. And my prayer is that those people will be the people that are in the actual program so we can create positions. Um, my biggest, biggest, biggest goal is to no longer sit in the CEO seat. And so once, so one of my devices went away somewhere, but once we are in a position to really pay and, and lift off, um, my biggest goal for this nonprofit and prayer is that we, y'all, I can't even find what device that is. My biggest prayer and goal for this um, nonprofit is to be able to sit our college graduates in those leadership seats. And so what that means, um, let's talk about what that means. What that means is that I'm always going to be rooting for black, but of course rooting for everyone. But rooting for black means statistically the seats that are leadership roles are not held by um, African Americans and especially women, right? And so my goal is to ensure that we create opportunities that oh, directly impact our... So my desire is that those positions in leadership directly go back to exactly what the purpose of the nonprofit is, right? And the nonprofit is specifically geared towards those um, people in under dis, um, underrepresented communities because the numbers are real and we can't fight against those. And let's just be honest really, really quickly, um, I'll educate you. You can't have a nonprofit that gives back to somebody that already has. So a nonprofit is literally created because there is a deficit. And so in order to fulfill that deficit, my goal, which I don't see in any other nonprofit, y'all know I like to do things different, is that once the, the kids are done, that one, you follow them through life, right? And so if, if they still need us, we are there. We can attest to that by, I know what each one of my girls is doing, each of them. They still communicate with me, text me, um, reach out to the business, tag us in things. And, and that is really important because we want to follow everyone through life so that we can ensure that you have what you need as you progress through the various steps, which um, the hard part is once you make it into the real world. And so what I don't see in other nonprofits, and hopefully this will start the, the thinking that when you are done with college or when you are in college and you need an internship or something like that, that we are making sure that those internships are available to the people that were in our program and the communities that we serve, right? How else can you create an opportunity? We can't just sit there 
<laughs> Y'all, let's see how this goes. We can't uh, just sit there and hope things will change. Um, and one of the things that I want to do and the reason why I continue to hold my position in corporate America as well as create other opportunities in business for myself is because I want all of the ones that come from the nonprofit to go back into the communities that we serve, right? That's what I desire because I've already been through and still going through um, I'll call it the turbulence. The turbulence that comes from trying to get those roles in leadership. So now I'm finally at the point where I can sit at those tables. I've created, um, I've created those relationships and things of that nature. And so I'm a little bit further. And so if the goal of the organization is to give opportunities earlier, provide the support, the direction, etc. I don't want to take one of those roles. Um, if I have to, I will. And, and of course, at the beginning, I have to. But my goal is to pass the baton. And so when there is a person that is capable of taking on that role, because example, they have gone to college, and while they're in college, they also they've also interned and done all of the things that that are needed to gain that experience to be able to sit in that seat. I want to sit them in that seat early on. I want to sit them in that seat and walk them through what that seat looks like. Now, those things and opportunities will be contractual, right? So what does contractual mean? That means that you will not sit in that role and retire from that role. That role is a bridge role to create a life cycle of opportunities, right? And so while you're in that role, you'll also be preparing for what your next step is, whatever it is. If it's in owning your own business, awesome. If it is to work for something you've always wanted to do is work for Disney, we're going to prepare you to better position yourself to sit in and apply for those leadership roles because now you could put on your resume that you are a whole CEO or whatever leadership position that you have within Divine Purpose or one of our subsidiaries. You now have that experience and you can put it on your resume. I know that I know that in um, in other cultures we've seen it where People have graduated and then, you know, they call their dad or their mom's friend and then what happens? They go into an amazing role and you're like, how the heck did they get that role? Well, they got it because they knew somebody. And so staying connected to Divine Purpose throughout is really important. And I'm glad that um, our girls have understood that because you not only need what you do in high school and in college, that's to prepare you, right? That's when you do your networking and figure out who does what so that you can align with that person um, or that organization or whatever it is you want to align so that you can get those opportunities as well. Because an underrepresented um, community, those, those things are not sitting there, right? Because they're underrepresented. They don't have those roles. They need those roles. They need those opportunities. Um, that's not something that they maybe have even seen in their family. They may be a first generation, um, the first generation to attend college, right? So if they're the first generation to attend college, then they don't have those same connections when they are preparing for preparing for the real world, right? Well, you do. You have an opportunity to be with Divine Purpose. And as you go through the program and stay connected, um, we keep our eyes and ears and hearts open to make sure that we do our best to, to show you that those things exist, right? In a, an array of 
of careers actually. Um, but that is my goal, to create that role or those roles in leadership and allow them to be contractual where you sit in the seat for, and this will vary because you have to um, see what the requirement is for a visit this on a, um, as we update our bylaws, which I think is every five years, because things change, right? So corporations and organizations could say that you need to have five years experience. It may go up to two, three, whatever it is, we're going to align the roles that you sit in with what the requirement is to obtain a leadership role within an organization. So that's a little bit or a highlight, high level, as they call it, high level um, explanation of why you all see me doing so many other things because those are the things for me. I'm making connections and ensuring that they all align. And then I also, like I said, I keep my role in, in corporate America um, to one, primarily and most, most important, fund this while we're getting off the ground. My goal, uh, and I am working diligently, is to obtain 100% financing, um, support, sponsorship from our communities, um, the organizations in our communities that we serve, and and the heavy hitters. So that's my goal. Um, I can't express enough how important it is to build the right relationships and try your best to work on those areas where you need help, right? So mostly in high school, everybody gets a, a prize and that wonderful thing that you can do um, is really highlighted and you kind of ride on that. You sit on that like, I know I got this because I could do this and this is what everybody thinks I'm so great for. Well, what do you think TT does with that? I call you out. I call you out because been there, done that, and, and it really doesn't benefit you. Let me tell you why your areas of strength that just come to you don't benefit you in regards to what I am speaking of. They don't benefit you because you already know that. If you already know it and it comes natural to you, that is your your um that is a part of your a part of your purpose, but what you do with it matters, right? So let's just say I'm really good at I'm really good at written communication as an example, right? So whenever I do something, I ensure that I can always write it first, right? Because you learn how to lean on what you have because that's what makes you number one look the best so it feeds your um it feeds you to be able to keep going right because everybody likes to feel good about what they do nothing wrong with it at all so we absolutely give you credit for it but we take it a step further here at divine purpose if i can see that you're really good at written communication i'll start making you talk and I'll tell you that I'm going to start making you talk and I'll prepare you to start being ready to talk. Here's why. If you're really good at something, why do you need to focus on it? If you're really good at something, why are you only leaning on that? Hone in on, zero in on, focus on how you can leverage that, um, that skill set, that talent, that blessing, that purpose and channel it and connect it to being even better, right? I talk about timing as well. When you are younger, in high school, in college, the expectation at that time is, oh, look at her or look at him. They're so, um, they're trying their best. Look at how much they're doing. Oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. Oh, I just love it, okay? 
That's what it looks like when you're in high school and in college, okay? What do you think that looks like when you're my age? If you haven't done anything else and you're still trying, only trying, not trying extra things, but just trying, it looks like, mm, so what was they doing, you know, this whole time? Or I'm not about to give them credit for something they should already know how to do. It's just the way that the brain works for a lot of leaders. And let's just be honest, when we're talking about the underserved and underrepresented um, communities, some of the things that you are doing because the opportunities are not there to expand and explore, some of those things are things that these other people that in other communities have been doing since dang near elementary, right? So it just looks a little bit different. Um, is it fair? N no, I don't think it's fair because we're comparing apples to oranges. Um, it's just not fair. But do we live in a world that cares if something is fair or is everything just moving? Most of the time, everything is just moving. As an HR manager and somebody who reviewed resumes, even before we got these portals like Taleo, where you drop your resume in and then it basically diagnoses your resume and tell you if you're, if the person is qualified. And then those are the people that are pulled out for us to take a look at when we're filling a role. As an HR manager, I also looked at the ones who scored low because I wanted to see if it's the verbiage that you use. So with those particular machines, um, and I call them machines because they did the work for us, but with those programs, machines, you know, whatever, we tell them what to pull out. And so if you don't use the same words and things like that, um, it won't recognize oh, this word is there too, unless it's put in there by the system. So I took it a little bit step further as a person coming from underrepresented communities. I took it a step further and would add those um, words behind the scenes as well as if, if they aligned and I knew what they meant um, so that we could get a more fair pool of people that qualified for a role, right? So those are... Um, things that I did, but given the world that we're in, especially even now, because there's so much information available at your fingertips and mostly everybody has a phone, that other layer of accountability is there. And so where before I could kind of have the argument that, that, well, you know, they don't know, how are they supposed to know this? Because there's so much information now, the the window is closing on, on those type of arguments because the idea is, well, if they could find everything else, you know, and be on TikTok and be on this and be on that, then why couldn't they do this? Or why couldn't they do that? And I'm going to be quite honest. I'm going to be quite honest, in some regard, I have that same that same um, opinion. However, uh, I have that opinion with a little bit of grace. And the reason why is because if I don't know what I'm looking for, how do I even know to look, right? Um, which leads me to the other piece of information that I want to give or something else that I want to do in divine purpose. I've talked about it in the opening video for this program here um, on Sunday. But one of the other things that I want to do is to get into these schools. I want to get into these areas where I know they wouldn't even know to look for these things. Cause you can't look for what you don't know what to look for. 
and I try to, I try, and there's a lot of us that try to correlate our message and tailor it so that the person listening that's in that big seat can, can understand it in their life, right? So we are well-versed or should be well-versed in whatever we went to school for. But if technology is introduced or something like that, I'm giving, using myself as an example, um, I look like a deer in headlights. Like those are things that I have to learn and I don't know what to ask for, the verbiage or anything like that until I know what to ask for. And no amount of research, you know, sometimes is going to help you with that because if you, again, in those search engines and things like that, you put in what you're looking for and hopefully somebody else has put in something similar so that the program will pull it out. What's my point in saying this? My point is align yourself with, aligning yourself with somebody who does what you want to do is important for this very reason that I am talking about because the excuse, I'm just giving you the, the words that, that's used behind closed doors, the excuse of, well, they didn't know, is, is getting a little bit smaller, but the resources are getting bigger. A lot of you just don't know about them. And so, one of the other things that we are doing with Divine Purpose now that the world is opening back up, because we plan to do it before, is I'm going to start visiting more schools and speaking to more people as the opportunities present themselves. Um, and what I mean by that is I have tried, uh -oh, I've tried with several institutions, however, unfortunately things are not always welcome and sometimes you have to beat down a door that was a learning for me and now that I have learned it um, I have no problem being Van Damme I don't I have no problem being at the PTA meeting the city hall meeting the wherever I need to be so you can hear you know the community can hear the politicians can hear, the, the people that make decisions can hear, these resources is, are out here, why are you not making sure that our kids get them? I want to hold some people accountable because you know people get in these seats of wanting to run for things and then that's all of a sudden when you hear from them and they may be doing things, you just don't know, but that is when we hear from them most and then we don't exactly see how how the benefits have worked out, well, I want to be able to deliver that information and share those success stories and things like that. I want to be more connected to the decision makers. I want to be able to, um, to sit in with the people that make these decisions and, and ensure that while we're talking, we're holding ourselves accountable as a community, as leaders, educators, um, anybody in a community is responsible. Anybody, everybody and anybody should be giving back to some degree. And giving back doesn't always include a check. If you work in any position, you could be a leader, right? And so if you're a leader, if you know your parents are a leader, align with them. I spoke a lot while we were in lockdown about hey guys we're working from home is your kid sitting next to you is your niece sitting next to you is somebody that wants to do what you do sitting next to you so they can see what you're doing that was the prime opportunity for us to develop and really take advantage of different things um, our resources and the people that we know even as adults prime time because we're working from home and so you could sit with somebody and see what they're doing. My, my prayer is that people took advantage of that. Um, 
and really connected as they were able to. People slowed down so you could get a hold of people more. But take these opportunities because the older that you get, the opportunities begin to cost you money. I'm not Asian. I'm not helping somebody 40 years old because I am already helping and giving back to the community. I'm not taking any time away from my girls to give it to somebody that age to a certain degree. Um, and that's just my preference. However, there are hundreds, literally, of people that can tell you that I have helped them. But what I mean is one-on-one, -on -one, all the time. Um, I don't have the time to do it um, because my, my focus is in another area. And I already have people that are with me as mentees. And until those seats open, I don't have any other seats and I don't announce them. I don't, it's just like, I feel like whoever God sends me, that's it. Um, but the older you get, you see what happens. Now it's, oh, when they fit in, because my girls and my, my young men come first. Um, and that's where my area of focus of giving back is. So my advice to you before I sign off is that you should take advantage of your opportunities now. Adults, if you are watching this, share this with somebody because you know somebody that needs help. You know somebody that needs direction. Share it because they need it. They need to know what to do to prepare themselves so we can stop being statistics, so we can stop saying we don't have, we wish we had, we wish we could, maybe if, that ain't for me, how come? Those things are going away. There's a so many nonprofits out there. You don't have to be in divine purpose. You don't. I just want you to get what is out there and what is available. Align with what works for you. This year, we are focusing on STEM and we are focusing on scholarships and really layering those suckers so you can go to college and just enjoy being in college and being in the community. Those are our three primary focuses for this year. Um, joining as a senior, it's a little bit harder because your ball has already started rolling. But if you want to join, please make sure that you do because we are going to give you just as much time and dedication and we'll just look a little different. So that is it for me today. Um, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. This is your senior year. This is your high school time. This is your college time. These are the years you can make all of your mistakes. Reach out, ask for help. And people are like, oh, I would love to. Look, they are so interested in this. I'm so proud of it. That is it from me. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure that you are following us because you don't want to miss out and say shoulda, coulda, woulda. And lastly, uh, TT don't do last minute stuff. That is my rule for this year. If you don't reach out in time, uh, your your uh, your lack of sense of urgency. It's not a priority for me. I'm holding you accountable. So that's it, my butterflies. So, goodbye, butterflies, goodbye. Goodbye, butterflies, goodbye. Goodbye.